Breeding pool enters for even more mana. <laughs> Please let them fizzle. Please. Greetings, everyone. I am glad to be here, and I am glad that you are here. Today's jank is in Historic, and we are going to be revisiting a deck we built a while ago. Uh, I had a lot of fun with this the first time, but that was kind of when Historic was a lot less powerful. There was no Amonkhet, there was no Kaladesh. Um, I'm not even sure if Jumpstart was out at the time. But what were we trying to do? Well, we were trying to use Cauldron Familiar and Witch's Oven. This combo, very familiar. Every time you can sacrifice the Cauldron Familiar to get a food. But then you can return Cauldron Familiar from the graveyard to the battlefield by sacrificing the food. So the Cauldron Familiar can just keep on coming back and draining the opponent. Kind of slow, but a familiar combo. Um, but what we're, what we're trying to do is make bats with that. Whenever one or more creature cards leave your graveyard, create a 1-1 bat creature token with flying. So the idea is we can make... Every time we go through our Call of Familiar loop, we can make a new bat, right? Uh, honestly, this particular version of the combo is a little slow, and we don't have a lot of interaction in the deck, so it's quite possible it's not great. But darn it, we're going to give it a go and try. Uh, the rest of our stuff is also graveyard-based synergies. We've got some Agadim's Awakening, some Malika Rebirth to make creatures leave our graveyard. We've also got uh, some Sacrifice Synergy stuff with Blood Artist and Bastion Remembrance. Um... So we're gonna we're gonna just try and give this a go, you know, and see if we can enjoy ourselves. Uh, that said, come on out. Uh, let's uh, let's let's battle, shall we? All right, folks. Here we are. We have two ovens. Uh, no cat. We have three lands, but. All of them are effectively tapped lands. I mean, I, I'm not going to lie. Just one Cauldron Familiar in this hand looks great. But we are going to mulligan it just to be safe. All right, yeah, I think this hand is quite a bit better. So let's keep this. Send back the Malachar Rebirth. And uh, let's get this party started, as they say. All right. We are going to start on Cauldron Familiar. Considering our opponent started on Breeding Pool, it is unlikely they have uh, any too much crazy stuff going on there. All right. Well, Skyclave Shade, come on down. We are going to go ahead and get in with Cauldron Familiar. If they want to trade Lotus Cobra for it, holy crud, we would love that. Uh, because, of course, we can sacrifice any creature, including the Skyclave Shade, to uh, the Witch's Oven to get the food to require or return the Cauldron Familiar. Uh... And of course, this is this stands to ramp our opponent quite a bit. Oh boy, Lotus Cobra number two. Well, not looking good, folks. I uh, do not think this bodes well for us. All right, opponent gets a Ramanop Excavator down. Hey. All right, let's get in with Skyclave Shade. Opponent just takes it. Fair enough. Well, then let's... Blood Artist. Witch's Oven. And pass. Yeah, we can uh, do a little bit of... Chumping and sacrificing and all that kind of stuff, right? But, uh... E-I-E-I-O. Our opponent on 25 and a half bajillion mana. I did the math. Um... I'm not great at math, though, so don't quote those numbers, but I'm pretty sure uh, it is a bajillion. Opponent goes for a blue and a red on the first land drop. With Fabled Passage, there is going to be even more. Yep. It looks like Genesis Ultimatum time. Lotus Cobra adding a green. And a, another green. Yeah, Genesis Ultimatum number one. With two Lotus Cobras on the battlefield, there it is easily possible that there could be another one yet this turn. We'll see. Holy crud, yep. Millions and millions of triggers. Uro, Titan Nature's Wrath, Oracle of Moldaya, some lands, and a Lotus Cobra hit the battlefield. Another land. Yeah, folks, this could be a second Genesis Ultimatum. Yeah. 
it does appear as though that's going to be the case. Um, <laughs> folks, this is uh, we've only had three turns, <laughs> and our opponent's casting two seven drops in a single turn. Uh, it turns out, folks, Historic is a powerful, powerful format. <laughs> Good heavens. Yeah. Genesis Ultimatum, number two. Fire Emancipation, Dry to the Leasing Grove, and Uro, Titan Nature's Wrath, all hitting the battlefield. Holy cow. All right, Steam Vents goes to hand. And shocks it in, down to 16, adding a bunch of mana. Yeah. A Hydrate Crisis, probably. <laughs> oh boy, folks. Oh my goodness, and a Fabled Passage? <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah, folks, this is the pinnacle of fair magic. Oh, okay. Explore. That was not Hydrate Crisis, notably. Okay. So adding millions and millions of mana. Going to shuffle away the top card of the library, almost certainly. Yep. They do that. Even more mana. Oh, my word. Breeding pool enters for even more mana. <laughs> Please let them fizzle. Please. All right, Uro, number three. Going to draw that. Oh, my goodness. It's another land underneath. Do they put it onto the battlefield? They choose not to. Going to bring that Uro Tiny Nature's Wrath back, I assume. Indeed. Exiling the whole bin. All of it. Yep. Land enters the hand. And all that mana goes away. Good heavens. Alright, well. We're gonna block. Uh... Yeah, fine. Yeah. We're going to take a ton of damage here. Yeah, down to 11. Well. Desecrated Tomb. And pass. Ay, ay, ay. All right. Opponent gets in with everything. Draws a card. Stride of the Leasing Grove with another Dryad of the Leasing Grove on the top. All right, so let's call him familiar. And sacrifice call him familiar. And recast call him familiar. And then block... No, block, 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 die? Yeah. Folks, it's awfully difficult to beat two Genesis Ultimatums on four, and in fact, we were not able to, so GG opponent, GG, you got us. 
A sand is fine. We will need to draw a Cauldron Familiar, but we do have Midnight Reaper and Lurus and Lost Rider and... Yeah. I think this is worth keeping. One more land and uh, we're good, but we are very, very likely to be able to get that. Because our land ratio, pretty high, all things can... For this, for as low a curve as we have. Um, ooh, Soul Warden. Well, that's not good. I searched it out. Yeah, our opponent, in fact, not going to uh, block there. Okay. We're going to kill the Soul Warden instead of the Pride Mate. That could be a mistake, but... Um, the, uh, the Soul Warden is definitely the card we're more frightened of. All things considered. All right, so let's get down Skyclave Shade here. And uh, see what we uh, see what we see. Opponent gets down Charming Prince, going to gain three life. No, Scry two, okay, sure. Bottom, bottom on that Scry. And get in four, two. This is fair as far as we're concerned. All right, so let's go ahead and Blood Artist and then attack. Opponent takes it down to 15. We are going to sacrifice the Skyclave Shade to try and make a land drop here. Opponent going to be drained for one in the process. All right, we get the um, Malakur Mire. Not so bad. We are, of course, still looking for... The monument. Oh, boy. Oketra's monument. I uh, I read monument and said monument. Um, but we're actually looking for the... Uh, um, Witches of it, of course. Darn it. All right. Midnight Reaper, come on down. Uh, we are going to send a message to the opponent. Taste it. Taste it. Soul Warden. Oh, crud. Yeah. That is not good news, folks. Things are about to get out of hand. They are, in fact, getting out of hand as we speak. Good golly, Miss Molly. Yeah, I definitely think it was correct to get rid of the Soul Warden when we did, but darn it. Um, things are uh, getting a bit crazy now. No blocks. You got it down to 12. Uh. Yeah. Whoa, Strider. Come on down. Opponent. Going to gain a life. Johnny going to get a counter. Soul Warden going to gain a life. Johnny going to get a counter. And trying to decide if we want to Agadim's Awakening here. Just as a land. Uh, I don't think so. I think we'll wait. All right. Golfer makes a land drop past Ajani's Pride Mate. Does indeed do it. Makes a 1-1. One, one, gains a life. Gets a counter. Johnny's Pride Mate enters. Gains a life. Both things get counters. Yeah, not looking good. Yeah, I do believe we have reached the point of the game where we are about to die. Yeah, yeah, The All Seed of Life's Bounty. Going to make protection from black on Johnny's Pride Mate a thing. So we will die as soon as the Johnny's Pride Mate big enough to make that happen. 
Yeah. So here we go. All right. GG opponent, GG, you got us. You got us. All right, folks, we're up against Siren. We're going to send this one back. Doesn't have any of our uh, key synergies in it. We're going to keep this one. Wish that our life was different. And... Uh, I guess send back the Blood Artist. Going to lead on Agadim's Awakening. Considering the uh, nature of this hand. There's there's a whole bunch of de decks that we're just going to lose on the spot to. Um, but we're in general, the historic format is pretty proactive all things considered, so we're going to want to make sure we can languish on four most likely. Uh, it's inherently possible we just die before then. Our opponent had land and Worlds on one. A land drop. Yep. Okay. And a Lotus Cobra, sure. Well, thank heavens, folks. We drew Cauldron Familiar into Witch's Oven. This is going to help us stay in the game. At least to a certain extent. The concern will be whether or not our opponent can, like, cast multiple uh, Genesis Ultimatums on turn four before we have a chance to languish. Um... Just the one Lotus Cobra, it's that's not unreasonable to assume might happen. Multiple, if they have another Lotus Cobra, yeah, it it's almost assured that they could do that thing. Yeah, opponent getting uh, several mana here. Gets Uro, Titan Nature's Wrath, come on down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Opponent goes right back up to 20, despite shocking and having a drain from Call of Familiar. Land enters the battlefield, adds mana of the green variety. And it's Land of Elves coming on down. Yep. Our turn. Well, we're going to sacrifice Call of Familiar. Add a food. Go to our turn. And unfortunately, folks, we cannot allow the Lotus Cobra to survive. It would be lovely to be able to wait until Languish next turn. And if we were on the play, everything would be different. We we could be fine here, theoretically. Uh, that's just not the case here. Uh, as it is, our opponent likely, yeah, has the mana for Genesis Ultimatum. And, oh boy, doesn't have it. Holy crud, that's fantastic. All right, we could do this. All right, well. Languish, get rid of your Llanowar Elves. It does fill the yard for Uro, which is annoying. Opponent only needs to get one more card now into the bin before they can bring Uro back. And we don't currently have a clean answer to Uro. But one problem at a time, darn it. Preventing our opponent from casting a bunch of Genesis Ultimatums is order of the day number one. Stomping ground tapped. Pass the turn. All right, well, let's call him familiar. Gain a life. Sacrifice call him familiar. Pass the turn. Oh boy, Bastion Remembrance is a very good one, but believe it or not, folks, we're not even going to bother with that one. We're just going to Midnight Reaper and Call of Familiar so that we can draw some cards. <laughs> it's the Genesis Ultimatum we were terrified of. Ah, uh, please. All right, Terror of the Peaks. Land World is dealing damage anywhere. It goes straight to the face. Not a surprising turn of events. All right, well. Call of Familiar being uh, returned to the battlefield. And Sacrifice. We're going to draw a card for our trouble. It's a mana. 
All right, we let that happen. Oh boy, that's a good one. Bastion Remembrance, come on down. Sure. We are going to cast another Witch's Oven here. And pass. We are praying they don't have more Genesis Ultimatums, right? Like, that is a very, very possible... Oh my gosh, they have Escape of the Wilds. Well, there are more Genesis Ultimatums coming next turn. Can we fight through that? I'm not optimistic. Opponent going to get to gain three life with Uro, Titan Nature's Wrath as well as deal six damage anywhere they please. They shock down to 12. All right, Uro, coming on down. Terror of the Peaks, going to target our Midnight Reaper. Oh, well, all right. So we're going to start doing things. Draining, drawing. Yep. Draining. Drawing. All right. Opponent goes up to 11. Gets a fabled passage. Midnight Reaper dies. We draw a final time. But not before draining. Yep. Yeah. Uro goes to the bin. Seven cards in the bin now. Siren has access to three mana currently. Nope. Make that four. Explore. Drawing a card. Can play an extra land. It's Evolving Wilds. Opponent cracks Fable Passage first. Four. A. Blue mana. And explore again. Opponent. Drops a breeding pool in tapped. And no attacks. All right, well, we will uh, return our call familiar to the battlefield. Yep. Oh, boy. Hey, now, wait a minute. Things are happening. Um, so let's desecrated tomb. And then get in with everybody. Opponent gets to block. We're going to sacrifice. Drop them to six. So we get to return. Five. Four. Three. Not enough, folks. Not enough. Okay. So let's just go ahead and wait then, shall we? Because we don't we need to be able to block the Terror of the Peaks. Um hopefully anyway. <laughs> Oof. Alright. Damage anywhere goes to our face. Damage anywhere goes to our face. Opponent just trying to do it. Yep. And Genesis Ultimatum. Lots and lots of mana tapped. It's another Terror of the Peaks and another Omnoth looks to the Royal. They keep the old one, but get a whole bunch of triggers. Yep. Damage, damage, damage. Counters, counters, damage. So we're going to resolve that one down to 21. Resolve that one, get draw a card. Resolve that one, draw a card. Damage. Yep. Damage. Damage. We drop to 10. All things considered, that was a really good Genesis Ultimatum for what our opponent was trying to accomplish. Did not quite deal the lethal damage that our opponent was hoping for there. All 
All right, they shock in, put a counter on Omnath Locus of the Royal. And Uro, Titan Nature's Wrath, going to come back from the graveyard. All right, can we kill them? If we return this, that's one. We sacrifice a new thing, that's two. We return it, that's three, right? So, yeah, I uh, don't believe we can kill them here. Six damage. Six damage. All right, so we're going to return. Yeah. And, of course, we are trying not to die. Because Uro Titan Nature's Wrath is a uh, very, very large creature. A chunky boy, all things considered. Yeah. But unfortunately, one is not zero, and the opponent really doing their thing. Evolving Wild's getting cracked. New Land comes in. Locust of the Royal gets a counter, draws a card. Fabled Passage. Gets cracked. It's a Mountain. Gets a counter, draws a card. Heads to combat. And scoops him up, folks! We got there! <laughs> huh? 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 Woo! Wow, that one was, uh, that was a hard-fought victory. That was a hard-fought victory, but good game. Okay, so for those of you wondering why our opponent scooped it up, of course, we were going to be able to chump here, but then we were going to be able to just untap, sacrifice our Call of Familiars. Uh, when we lose creatures, when they die, they, they get drained, and then we just return them right back to the battlefield immediately during our main phase, and our opponent loses the remainder of their life. So uh, one is not zero, folks. One is not zero. Both the, the opponent... And I were at one that game uh, at one point or another. So holy cow, definitely, definitely close. GG indeed. This hand is not doing great. So we're going to send that one back and pray that this one's better. Yeah, okay, this, this is okay. Uh, I wouldn't describe this as amazing or anything, but, you know, we do have a turn one Thoughtseize. We have the Skyclave Shade for our Sacrifice Synergies. Ay, ay, ay. Holy crud, all this is bad. All right. We're going to go ahead and get down a Skyclave Shade. And pass. Give them a turn or two to draw more nonsense. We know they're going to be casting Guardian Idols or something this turn, right? So. Opponent going to take their beats. We're going to Thoughtseize again. Right. Paradox Engine, I guess, is the draw. Or, I mean, is the take. They drew a Mind Stone. They get to get down both the Mind Stone and the Guardian Idol now. And we're just going to keep drawing lands. All right. I suppose that's uh, reasonable. Golos Tireless Pilgrim comes off the top for our opponent. They get to go and find the five color land. No, they get the uh, life gain interplanar beacon land. And we pass. All right, folks. Mindstone gets cracked. Opponent going to go looking for something to do. They find a card and draw a brand new one as well for the turn. Spire of Industry comes on down. Veto of the Dusk Rose for our opponent. Opponent gets in for three. We take it. All 
All right, fine. Hey, that's a good one. All right, Skyclave Shade, get in there. All right. We trade with Vito. Make a land drop. Recast it as the little version. And pass. Uh, we are almost certainly going to village rights at this this turn here. Um, yeah, we need to uh, we need to draw into some action there. The mulligan not extraordinarily kind to us, though it did help us slow our opponent down quite a bit. We are still way behind the eight ball. Oh, my word. All right. You know what? Let's just go with the big version, I guess. Uh, that is... That is not great, folks. Oh, my goodness. And the Forsaken Monument. That will do it, folks. We can't... Uh, we can't do anything about that. Oh, the opponent uh, missing lethal here. They could have attacked both Guardian Idols. And... You know, those are 4-4s four and we just die. <laughs> And we keep drawing lands. All right. Feels bad, man. You got it, opponent. You got it. It's difficult, but I think we are going to keep it. Um, going to start on Thoughtseize. And pray. Uh, yeah. If our opponent is on Mono Brown again, I'm going to cry. This is a terrible matchup for us, folks. Oh, my word. For the love of all things holy, this is terrible news. <laughs> Our opponent had no idea what was happening there. <laughs> Honestly, I think of all of the matchups, I think Mono Brown is uh, is by far our worst matchup. And honestly, I would say we are probably something like 80% or more to lose that matchup. And like, our opponent scooped the turn one Thoughtseize because they assumed we were doing something entirely different than we were doing, folks. One of those times when a... Uh, a scoop is truly and genuinely premature. But, all right, we will take it. I guess, GG opponent, thank you for the charity. <laughs> all right, folks, we're back. Um, I'm not gonna lie, the deck did not do real good. <laughs> um, it, uh, it definitely needs help, folks. Please, down in the comments below, let me know. How do we help this deck? I really love the idea. I, for what it's worth, I really enjoy Desecrated Tomb. Uh, I, think it's, I think it's a lot of fun. I think the card is great. But darn it, we just... we it, The deck really didn't get there. It was, it was even slower than I would have expected. Honestly, for the most part, Skyclave Shade has never let me down. Every time I play that card, I'm really, really excited about it. That said, this time, I don't know. It really didn't do much. And it can't block, so that wasn't great. Um, there was like... It certainly felt like we didn't have enough interaction. I don't know. Everything was bad. Holy crud. <laughs> so please, folks, help bail me out. Get me out of this mess I've created for myself. Um... And help me retool this deck so we can play it. Uh, I, we're revisiting this on a Friday because I really enjoyed the deck the first time. But I'm not even going to lie. I didn't even have a great time playing it this time. Uh, it was just... I kind of got beat up pretty good. So, 
help me get this fixed so that we can have a good time. Maybe it's adding another color. Maybe we could do Rakdos or maybe we could do green, green, black or something. Uh, whatever it is we got to do, help me out. Let's make cats and bats happen, shall we? Uh, that said, uh, I really do appreciate everybody you tuned in. Um, yeah, helping me down in the comments would be uh, really appreciated. But also, uh, just, you know, for watching the video, if you've watched this long, I really appreciate you sticking with me. So, thanks a lot. But if you've watched this long, that means you might enjoy the content enough to come on out to our Twitch stream. Darn it, you, uh, you can see up there, uh, I'm sorry, over there, we had a random follower. Uh, that's on the, this is for my Twitch. I record this using the same program I go live on Twitch with. So, uh, Jin san welcome to the family. I appreciate that follow. Uh, but you too, you could just come on out and uh, and give us a follow. Uh, and and then uh, you can catch us when we go live. I stream five nights a week, folks. That's a lot of, that's a lot of Magic the Gathering. So uh, I'd love to have you out there and get to know you on a personal level and uh, hopefully become friends. That, that's what I want. So that said, I do appreciate you watching anyhow. And you folks have a wonderful, wonderful evening. I will catch you next time.